On today's show, we have Corey Mann. Corey is a radio DJ with Pulse FM in South Bend, talented artist, loving husband, caring father, a man with prolific knowledge in comic books, owner of many vinyls that I wish I had myself, winner of multiple awards, including recently taking home the Spark Media Fan Best Male Host Award, and now Stand Up Comic. What else, Corey Mann? Did I miss anything? Did I mention I love to eat? No, that's 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 new. My doctor last week said, well, the good news is your stomach is flat. The bad news is the <laughs> L is silent. That's amazing. Now, Corey, we're, we're grateful that you're here. We've listened to what else for a long time. Actually, when we first started our podcast uh, in 2020, I maybe we were one or two episodes in and I went to Jacob and I said, you got to listen to this guy. He asks the best questions and that's how i want to have interviews so um i've been copying my friend uh i'll take that as flattery uh please steal anything i say and make it better because that's exactly what i've done in the past <sighs> oh wow guys i've been in radio broadcasting since i was 18 and i turned 54 this year so this th your microphone in front of you that's what i know how to do that's what I know how to do. That's what I'm stuck with. I've tried a few things along the way uh, to just help me when I get bored. But uh, it's what I know how to do. And you, uh, if you are like me, you're a lifelong learner. And you want to polish the craft. You know, you want to learn from the best. So you watch the late night shows. And you watch the interviews. And you read books about Larry King. And you read other podcasts hosts who have you know millions of downloads per episode and just try to find your voice when all within all that you know the old the old rule of ten thousand hours i mean when i first started i wanted to be multiple different people and then probably about a decade into it when i was in my early 20s i finally started hearing myself for the first time and there's no better person for you and i to be than ourselves but it just took me a little longer to get there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now is is Pulse FM? Have you guys started playing Christmas music yet, or is that coming up soon? Uh, Christmas music preview weekends, Jacob, Ooh, where we just okay. give you a taste. Because uh -huh. uh, if you know anything about culture and society, people are shopping on the weekends, and it also gives me a chance to hear the Christmas playlist and go, okay, does this fit? Is that right? Imaging stuff between the songs. And so it was our first weekend this last weekend as we record this. And then we've got another one this weekend. And then we go full tilt on Thanksgiving afternoon. Mm. And, and now do you guys get more emails saying, what are you doing? Or more emails saying, thank you so much for playing Christmas music before Thanksgiving? Down the middle. Yeah, I, mean, right. but, I mean, I think more than ever society-wise, we're getting used to it. Like I remember seeing Christmas yeah. mm -hmm. stuff at our big Walmart. I mean, late September, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and it's just, I, I wonder if we're going to get to a place where Thanksgiving and Christmas are almost, you know, kind of intertwined in a way, you know, there's people who are like, we got to give Thanksgiving it's due. And it's like, well, we can be grateful all year long. Let's calm down a bit. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, we put up our tree uh, two nights ago, and mm -hmm. I told my wife, I said, the man family just needs some joy, so let's get it up, like, now. So we, well, I mean, we're about 80% done upstairs, so. Sure, yeah. Well, Corey, what, uh, you, you talked about it briefly a minute ago, but what uh, made you, what caused you, I guess, to get into the uh, industry that you're in? I was lost in my teens. Uh, I thought I wanted to be a Disney animator. And so this is 1986, 1987 ish back when it was like that original kind of animation, you know, drawing one page at a time mm -hmm. kind of deal. And there was a authoritative voice in my life that said, there's no future in that. You might want to join the military instead. And because I believed this person, I was like, all right. So I put the pencil down and uh, I did not join the military. And I called my local morning show radio DJ in the little town I grew up in. And I called the request line. 
And I just said exactly what I said to you guys. I'm 18. I'm lost. I don't want to work at UPS the rest of my life. Uh, can I come see what you do? And he's like, no one has ever called and asked me that. So come on down. But let's do the whole thing. 6 a.m. when I start till 10 a.m. So you can really get a feel for it. And I'm like, oh. You know, and when you're 18, you're like, 6 a.m. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <Right>. it comes twice. <laughs> yeah. And so I went in, and he was so cordial to me and helpful and inspiring. And before that morning was over, because apparently I asked enough questions and he saw something in me, which I still to this day, I try to do for others. He saw something in me and gave me a chance. And he's like, I've got an overnight shift that no one will work. And you know, you got to be live. This is pre-automation before radio stations knew how to do that. You got to be awake. You got to be on. It's an eight hour shift. And I'm going to give you, are you guys sitting down? Three dollars and thirty-five cents an hour. Wow! What? I was the richest man in the world. <laughs> you can so retire. I did it. <laughs> and so I did it. And uh, yeah, since uh, late summer of '91, and I don't know, January of 2024 feels like it should be some sort of anniversary, but I don't know the math. Hmm. So you've been doing it um, uh, since I was one years old. <laughs> well, it was great over, talking with over you, those, <laughs> over, over all those years, what has been your most interesting interview or weirdest interview that you've had? So I worked at a small radio station, and I worked in mainstream for a long time. And we started making a name for ourselves. I got moved to the morning show. And I said, I want to start doing interviews like the big radio stations. But man, how do you, how do you land the big fish? And this is right on the front end of the internet, too, okay? So I just start learning the internet the best I can and trying to find, like, fan websites or mailing addresses and phone numbers. And the first big interview, at least in my head, we landed as a morning show was a guy named Glenn Shaddix, the fat guy from Beetlejuice. Anyone? <laughs> Anyone. <laughs> yeah. And I thought we had an Academy Award winner and um we didn't. But we invited the audience <laughs> in on it and then we started to build from there you guys. Like, okay, we we've got to get someone else that's next level. So we got the kid from uh Breakfast Club, Anthony Michael Hall. And then we got uh Brian Cranston from a show called Malcolm in the Middle. And mm -hmm. then we got one of the main nurses on ER, which was a big deal. Remember, we're in the 90s, guys. Don't make mm -hmm. fun of me. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, you know, a couple of local athletes, because I'm in South Bend, so the University of Notre Dame was cranking out some primo athletes in the 90s. Mm -hmm. And I would say the biggest names that might resonate with this little interview between the four of us, the biggest one would be Muhammad Ali. Uh, the greatest boxing champ in the world who actually was in the studio with me. We had, we had started up a, a friendship back in 2000. The second one would be on the morning that he found out that his movie was number one in the box office, Chris Farley on his way to training for Beverly Hills Ninja because Black Sheep was number one. And he was in a Fiero in Los Angeles when he called that was that was pretty special. Yeah. Um, and then the rest is just kind of fill in the blank. I've kind of talked to everybody, including Jacob, Jesse, and Chris from the Christian Rock Music Guys podcast. We are right up there with the fat guy from Beetlejuice, I would fat imagine. Fat guy from Beetlejuice. Woo! Don't forget <laughs> I was in Planet of the Apes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate uh, it. You said you talked with Chris Farley. Uh, was what movie? What what what? What was he doing around then? What kind of movie? What you know? Yeah, Black was Sheep was number one. Okay, he called the following Monday morning, and he was just starting to work on Beverly Hills Ninja. Okay, yeah. so he awesome. already did the fat guy in the little suit thing. That was Tommy Boy. Yeah, so yeah, we yeah. we may have said that during the interview. Yes, <laughs> awesome. You know, um, Corey, one of my favorite things that you do on your podcast when you're interviewing artists is when you guys start talking music with each other, but not their music, other music, uh, hearing you guys kind of go into depth. What is 
like who's your go-to and anyone who follows you on Instagram kind of knows your flavor of music and the shows you go to, but who are some of your, like if you had a top three, are you able to make a top three band of all time? Yeah. Let's go. Let's, can we do four? Let's do four. Mm, yeah. Why not? Uh, in no order, Van Halen, U2, Metallica, and the Beatles. Wow. That'd be an expensive yeah. ticket. <laughs> uh, and it has been many a times, my friend, many a times. And <laughs> as we record this, I'm heading to Las Vegas on December 8th to see uh, you two at the Sphere because, you know, Ooh, I have yeah. To. Yes. That's going to be saw, awesome. I saw you two twice in one year a few years ago, right before we started having kids. Me and my wife went. Um, they came at local where we are and then we flew to pittsburgh to see him again the same year i will uh try to top your story i don't like doing this but we did uh two times in one weekend it was the josh Richard oh, anniversary yes. tour so yeah that's the one we were at yep. on saturday night and then my wife's like i'm not staying another night for this and she went home with a buddy of mine and i was like all right i'll see you on monday morning and i went the next night and <laughs> Oh, that yeah. was more or less, and you know, because I'm a big fan of the adventure. That was more or less to say, guys, I saw you two two nights in a row. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, now you can stand here today and tell that story to us. Yes, I can one up any of you. Let's go. Oh. oh yeah. Well, I saw the new Ghostbusters twice in two months. Oh yeah. Well, I saw the Force <laughs> Awakens seven nights in a row when it opened. <laughs> That's four hours a night. It was. I will not get that back. <laughs> so you, one of your interviews that I thought was pretty neat, um, just because I'm a cartoon guy, I love the old school cartoons, was James Arnold Taylor, um, that I guess is one of the newer voices of Fred Flintstone. I, I don't assume that he's the the, old, the OG guy, but no. um, how was what was that like uh, talking with James? Jacob, it was amazing. And uh, name drop, we were texting tonight about um, uh, he's going to make a video for a buddy of mine for his birthday. And he's got this amazing studio with a cardboard cutout of Obi-Wan Kenobi with a lightsaber. And he's been the voice of Obi-Wan Kenobi for 20 years, all the mm. animated stuff. Mm -hmm. But as you heard in that episode, maybe... Uh, the voice of Fred Flintstone, you know, the serial stuff and whatever Warner Brothers or whoever that is that owns the Flintstones these days. But he his resume is so incredible. And I went down the deepest rabbit hole just looking up stuff. And he's just been around the block so many times. And then, you know, in the podcast episode, I found out we're one month apart from each other birth wise. So all of our references lined up with each other, which was super helpful. And uh, yeah. he is such a great guy. And like we had this moment, and I think it's on the episode. I haven't listened to it in a while of like, we became friends on the episode. Like mm, you're hearing it genuine, you know? Mm -hmm. And yeah, um, I just, I just love that. And I'm getting a little bit more bold with that kind of stuff. I had an interview with a, 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 a guy just yesterday. And at the end, I'm like, did we just become best friends? And he's like, yeah, yeah if you want to. And I'm like, let's do it. Let's go do some karate in the garage. <laughs> I was just about to say you all had your stepbrother moment. We did. <laughs> did you uh, Did you get James to do the yabba dabba do? I mean. You got to listen to the episode. He does a great moment of the original voice. And then he segues to the guy that took over from the original voice. And then that yeah. guy did it for 40 years. And then that guy got to choose who the next person was. And James was in on that. And it's, I mean, there's a science to voice mm. acting and sure. landing it. And in my opinion, cause I grew up with Fred Flintstone, he nails it and uh, it's super nerdy, but I would um, highly suggest all of your listeners to go check out what else with Corey Mann episode two thirty nine. I think that's a total guess. Yeah, Not yeah, it was really neat. I mean, we we had a uh, Kel Mitchell of Nickelodeon and Good Burger fame, and oh, yeah. at the end, at the very end of our interview, we were we were he was going to do an intro, and he busts out 
uh, his Ed from Good Burger thing. He does the whole intro for our podcast in the Ed voice. We didn't ask him to, but it was it was probably a highlight of so far doing the podcast when he did that because that was my my childhood rushing in all at once. I love that. Now, if you really want to be creepy, you need to interview the guy that voices uh, Barney. I mean. <laughs> Uh, is he alive? I, 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 there's I, I, there's there's sure. Have you seen the documentary on, I think, Peacock or whatever? Of Barney? Yeah, it's pretty messed up. It's like oh boy, the fame that Barney had and then all the haters. There was like fan clubs that wanted him dead. <laughs> what a life. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, Corey, are you ready to do a uh, some favorite things so where we list a category and you let us know what your favorite thing in that category we is? Are a few of my favorite things when the Wonderful. dawn breaks, when the fart happens, or whatever. I don't know. Go ahead. Yeah, let's go. We now <laughs> have a new intro for this segment. It's awesome. Um, oh, by the way, who do, who do, is singing the intro for your podcast? Sure. Uh, he's a friend of mine. His name's Chris Cron. And Chris had a, a decent hit with a, a remix guy named Neon Feather called Safe. And then they became a group called All Creatures. And they had a song about a year and a half ago called Wonder Working. And I reached out to him for an interview and we hit it off. And, you know, I did my homework on him. So he was impressed that I knew that he did the video game songs and different stuff. And then... I said, what does it cost for someone like you? Because that's actually his job. I'm like, what does it cost mm. to create a song or whatever? And he jokingly said, for you? You know, something, something, something. And then sure enough, after we were done, he texted me. He goes, seriously, let me do a song for you. What kind of music do you like? And I said, Def Leppard, Butt Rock, Harmony, <laughs> I love it. whatever. Yeah. And within the hour that song that you guys hear on the front end oh it's so good is this good enough and i'm like yes yes it'll do take it yeah yes thank you thank (laughs) you very much yeah he hit the he hit all the vibes that you were asking them for so uh cory what is your favorite food pizza i'm a pizza guy second place would probably be wings i like wings are you are you the type that likes pineapple on their pizza yep just had pineapple tonight pineapple mushroom and uh pepperoni and i've become a fan uh not by choice of uh cauliflower crust uh it's a it's a health and medical thing yeah uh, it's not bad i've had it depends on where fun. you get it yeah. yeah do you have a favorite movie of all time <laughs> come on guys <laughs> it's beetlejuice clearly Beetlejuice. <laughs> Beetlejuice. No. Uh, Empire Strikes Back. It's okay. Yeah. Empire Strikes Back. Now, what what was your first Star Wars movie you were introduced to? The first were you one, episode. Okay. I was gonna say, did you go to theaters? Did you Yes, yeah, so not... the movie was huge. All my friends are talking about it in school. And I couldn't get my parents to take me. And I was young at the time, whatever the math is there. And finally, like months after, they're like, okay, we'll take you to a matinee or whatever. And the line was still around the building. I so vividly remember this. And so we go to this theater, and we are in the very back row of this sold-out theater. And when those lights go down in that 20th Century Fox, I mean, it was it was one of the best movie-going experiences ever. And I'm into it. I'm on the edge of my seat. Dad's on my left. Mom's on my right. And we're watching, and it gets to the cantina scene. And my dad says in his outside voice, because he was, he goes, I thought we were going to see Star Wars, not Sesame Street. (laughs) That entire theater turned their head and was just like, (laughs) you're dead. You are dead in an hour and 38 minutes. (laughs) Yeah, right. He slumped down in his seat and didn't say another word. And I walked out of there just like, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. Until the next time I see it, then that will be the greatest thing I've ever seen. Um, favorite show to binge? I watch a lot of TV, guys. I draw, and so I'm downstairs where I draw, and we've got a TV down here, so sometimes I put stuff on just so I can hear yep. it, and then I'll look up from time to time. So I've watched a lot of stuff. To binge? Oh, boy. 
Well, the first one that comes to mind that you can listen to and not have to watch is West Wing, one of the greatest shows of all time. Yeah. But I mean, what shows have I watched and binged? That we, that'll be part two of if you guys ever have me back. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if you were not in the radio industry, what would you be doing? I would try stand-up comedy. Like, I would have chased after it at a younger age. Um, I have a lot of self-doubt and do I have what it takes issues. Thanks, Dad. So I would like to draw. I would have liked to have been an artist in some capacity. Apparently, there is a future in that. Pixar, hello. Uh, Come comic on. Book, hello. Uh, so I, I would have liked to have done that. Um, I briefly, you guys worked at my local church. I walked away from radio for five years and I was a high school uh, student ministry director. Um, I could see myself sticking to that had I not had a passion for what I'm doing now. Is there a favorite ice cream flavor? Yeah, uh, I'm such a nerd. Sorry, guys. I, I try to stay away from it. And when I do get to have it, if I have a cheat day, I go full on banana split. Because okay. that puts you that right you're... to the front of the line of dying, I think. <laughs> if you're going to do it, go for it, right? Yeah. Now, are you making your own banana split, or are you buying banana split flavored ice cream? No, no, no. I'll go I'll go to a place called The Chief. You guys heard of The Chief? Gotcha. <laughs> and they're right down the street, and uh, it's a bunch of cool high school kids, and, and they know how to make a good banana split. Yeah, ours is called Dairy Delight. That's That's where we go. You know... Let's talk about the great names in American society. Record yeah. stores, ice cream parlors, uh, hair salons, oh, the main event, the oh, best yes. warehouse in Texas. They're awesome. I, you know, uh, what, else, what else does cool names? Sometimes breweries come up with some cool stuff. But, they uh, do. Hair salons, ice cream places, and record stores. What, what what's a what's a good vinyl name in your area? A good record store name where you go pick up vinyl? Vinyl Tap. Vinyl Tap. Oh, that's good. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Ours is Electric Ladyland. Oh, that's fantastic. That's so great. I grew up with a place called Music Magic and um, it was truly magical. Now John Chris, <laughs> that's he does some bits sometimes on his Instagram where he'll take pictures of either a church sign or a CBD sign. He's like, you let me know if it's a CBD place or a church name. And a lot of times it's CBD and you think it's a church name. <laughs> when I go, uh, when I go to a show, a concert, I, I try to go to Michigan cause I go to Chicago a lot, but I lose an hour and it's just brutal on my schedule. So we go to mm. Michigan in the last, Oh my gosh, you guys, in the last nine days, we've been there three times for three different shows. And Michigan, I don't know if you know this or not, but weed is legal in Michigan. So every billboard is exactly that. And the best <laughs> sign, and I can't wait to see it. I think it's at mile marker like 68 on I-94. Uh, the town is Kalamazoo, but the, the, the uh, store is called Cannabis Zoo. Uh, oh, that's so good. <laughs> they were waiting for that to legalize there. Someone had that uh, idea for a long time. I want a shirt. I want that shirt. Cannabis yeah. too. Uh, all right, Corey, do you have a favorite podcast? For the longest time, it was Smartless with um, those three guys uh, because they're so bad. They're yeah. so bad that they're good, you know? And. Mm -hmm. I, I just, I mean, they must truly love each other to rip on each other the way they do. Oh, yeah. um, so I like that one. I like uh, Pop Culture Happy Hour, NPR. I like Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend. I like uh, Mark Marin from time to time. I like uh, Terry Gross and Fresh Air. She's one of the greatest interviewers of our, uh, of our lives. I like uh, I like podcasts. Oh my gosh, my current one that I like: sixty songs that explain the nineties. Have you? Oh, that sounds good. And what resonates with me is I was in radio at that time, and I could be pretty brutal about nineties music because it, in my opinion, was the worst ever. Um, I think the middle brother just got offended because the screen went black. I apologize, but um, <laughs> that's a great. Uh, 
podcast, and he's coming out with a book, so I'm really looking forward to that one. Uh, 60 songs that explain the 90s. Hmm. Interesting. Corey. What do you guys think Jesse's doing right now? Oh, sorry. I was actually, I was, did I disappear? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Am I back? No. Nope. No. Oh, really? Let me, I can see myself. Am I still gone? To you me, you back. are. That's You're so back weird. Online. Okay. I can hear oh, you though. That's clearly. weird. I was actually Googling 60 songs that explain the 90s in another tab so I wouldn't forget about it. Yeah, it's really good. It's really good. Uh, my favorite right now is Fly on the Wall with Dana Carvey and uh, David Spade. Who said that? Chris said that? Yes. Chris, Chris you know, what, what drives me up the wall about that episode, and we're back with Jesse, what drives me up the wall about that is the <laughs> audio is just janky. Yeah. They talk over each other, and I uh, being in radio broadcasting, I've been taught not to do that, and so it's just... It it gets on my nerves, but it is it is a good podcast. I will agree with you. Another one we got introduced by um, the Todd from Sela is Blurry Creatures. Oh, I've not heard of that one. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> it's get your aluminum hat on and start listening. If you, um, yeah, if you like the show, um, what's it called? From the nineties. Unsolved I mean, Mysteries? No. Unsolved Mysteries. No, what's from the, a biblical perspective. Yeah, but what's the alien show from David Duchovny? Um, oh, X-Files. X-Files, yeah. It's it's like yes. aliens and Bigfoot and all this stuff and the Nephilim. And and it's all themed stuff. to the 80s, which is awesome. What's even more great is I've heard a lot of things said to me today, but I didn't know I was going to hear... The guy from Sela told us that Blurry Creatures is a good podcast. You know, we were just as surprised when he told us. <laughs> Apparently, Corey, in the CCM world, there's a whole club that loves this podcast. Meredith Andrews is in this club. Todd. Of course she is. Uh, there's, a, <laughs> there's, a few, there's a few people uh, that really they have a blurry con. I don't know. Um, we should all go to it. <laughs> I'm busy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be going to Kalamazoo. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to Kalamazoo and then the Comic Con. Well, um, what's next for you, Corey, and how can our listeners keep up with you? Well, we'll keep cranking out this podcast. Um, fifth year of doing it. Uh, for the first time in the history of my run, I was asked to take down an episode yesterday. Which was wow. interesting, uh, politically charged, um, and it reminded me of that great quote that I will train wreck for you right now. Lack of preparation on your part does not create an emergency on my part. Yeah. Um, if you don't want your artist talking to anybody, don't schedule the interview. And if you want your artist to sound great, do not have them do a Zoom from their grandparents' basement where the mm. sink is bad for 30 minutes. I mean, just a few editorial comments between the four of us friends. So it's a small pond. I took it down. And uh, quote, unquote, I'm promised that we will do it again, maybe even in person. Woo! That's no great. hard will or feelings at all, if you guys can tell. No, not at all. No. For our listeners, he is smiling pleasantly. Uh, so anyways, yeah. So I keep doing the podcast. I do new uh, episodes on Mondays. Um, I'm going to chase after stand-up comedy. Uh, I did it a few years ago and just didn't do my, my life schedule accordingly. And some things have opened up. And I know that you have to sometimes give up stuff to to, to go a different direction. So I'm going to do that. And so hopefully this time next year, if, if we remain friends, which I hope we do, uh, I will let you know that I am well on my way and, uh, that'll, that'll be a side hustle. Uh, but I feel like I can, I can deliver the goods for, uh, the people in the uh, small club with the drop ceiling and the low lights. Uh, I also draw a lot. Uh, I do, um, 
podcast uh, logos. I do T-shirts. I do Christmas cards. Uh, sometimes I just draw for fun. Uh, I so I I try to do that multiple times a week. Uh, yeah, sure, guys. I'll show you something I've been drawing recently. Sure. I mean, thanks for yeah. asking. Hey, listen, uh, I was about to say at the risk of sounding kind of creepy, I don't miss many of your live Instagrams where you are drawing. Nice. They're very therapeutic for me to watch you go through the process. That's what I hear. Um, I hear that uh, it's, a, it's a calming effect. Um, it is. So I try to remember to do that from time to time. And uh, I'm looking for something that I could show you that I'd be happy with. Uh, oh, this one's fun. This was a Scooby Doo I did around Halloween time. Oh yeah, that's pretty. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, Batman. I'm a big Batman nut, so uh, that kind of fits my head. It does. <laughs> it works. That works out. <laughs> Thumbnail. So yeah, and I'm um, raising a 16 year old son. I uh, will celebrate my 30th wedding anniversary in April of 2024, mm. and. Um, yeah, just trying to stay busy, stay creative, um, meet new people, stay curious, uh, chase after childlike wonder, and um, yeah, life is good. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Corey, to wrap up, we'd like to see if you'd be willing to share something that God has been doing in your life, maybe even recently, uh, that would help build our listeners' faith up. Oh, boy. Hmm. Okay. I keep coming back to one of my favorite stories in the Bible, and I I hold friendships in high value. And one of my favorite stories is when the four friends take the paralyzed man up to the roof because they can't get in the sold-out arena because Jesus is teaching. And it's standing room only, shoulder to shoulder, and there was a cover charge. And he's reading from the sacred scrolls, and all of a sudden, dust starts to fall from the drop ceiling, and he sees these four guys lowering this paralyzed man. And, you know, you got to fill in the blank a little bit in that verse, but is Jesus looking up in wonder of the human condition of, like, look at these four guys. Look at these four guys helping this guy. And, boy, isn't it? Because of the four guys' faith, you're saved. Because of mm. what I see from your circle of people, you're saved. And at the same time, you're wondering, how did that inspire all those people that were in there cramped up looking, going, what just happened? And Matt Marr has such a great song right now. Um, and the words are, I just want to be in the room when you move. And I'm not mm -hmm. leaving until you do. And... And, you know, just like a tear down the roof. And it's just, it's such an anthem. But there's so many moments in that story. I want to, I want to be a friend like that to somebody. I want to have a, a group of friends like that to surround me. And that would be willing to um, lift me up or lower me down to Christ. Um, so that would be my encouragement to you is go read that story. There's a lot of stuff happening in there and move the camera slightly to the left and slightly to the right and look through other people's perspectives. And I think you'll gain some inspiration and wisdom in those moments as well. Yeah. Well, it's good. Uh, thank you, Corey. And thank you, man, for just taking the time and chatting with us this evening. Uh, it was an honor and uh, you'll find Corey in Kalamazoo uh, doing his thing. And, you uh, will not find me in Kalamazoo. I will not be going into that store. I just said it was a funny billboard. Come on. Yeah. No, we're going to see him in Las Vegas as we drop him through the roof of the sphere to see you too. I like what's happening here. Gentlemen, if yeah. I can um, applaud you, uh, I too have been watching what you guys are doing. And uh, I've had to pray through some jealousy on some of your guests that I've not been able to land. But uh, it's a big enough pond that we can all take a swim in. And sometimes guys like you land a cannonball that inspire me. So great job. Congratulations. And uh, thanks, Corey. Continue to chase after this and uh, have fun doing it along the way. Oh, yeah. Appreciate it.